chaps, when you're handling a, a colonoscope, you need to know what the scope can do. And in knowing what the scope can do, you need to understand what this is. So does everybody know what this is? What is it? What's this? Okay. So, when this is actually working, we we'll put the right. And we've got the light. We see colour. On this system, with it being old, it, it's not doing what? What does your scope normally do in your units? Does it normally fix light, or is it a flashing light? So it fixed lights, so you're on the older system. Flashing lights, why does it flash? Why is it doing this? Well, it, you think that the image is going to be better, but yeah. why is it flashing? What it's doing is, is that it's flashing the three primary colours. And the chip on the end, it perceives what is being reflected and it gives you a perception of colour. So the most important thing when you're ever colonoscoping or gastroscoping or doing any RCP is to tell this, through this, what white light looks like. So that gives it a foundation. It flashes so that that will percentage measure the light that's reflected back and that'll give you a perception of colour. On the older system it's a solid light so it actually gives you what it thinks is again a perception of colour but strobing is very important. Now on the scope what have we got? What's this button? Suction. This button? Okay. How does it work? How does it work? What does it do? What does it do? How? How? When you just put your finger, it gives the gas, or the air, it's. How? <laughs> so, can you hear the noise? Uh, that's not suction. The air is actually coming out this button here. Can you see the hole? When you cover this, the air can no longer escape. And the air goes down there and then comes out at the end. Okay? What's the most important part is these bungs. Can you see now we've got water? So as soon as we actually press this, touch it, that's just air. But as soon as we press it, you can get water. See it? Why? That's its purpose. That's the purpose of the water. But why does the water come out? Right, so you've covered the air. You press it in. The hole is moved across. The rubber seals seal the gap, the air then goes into the water. The water then is propelled back up, so it diverts the air into the bottle. Okay? So the re why do you think I'm getting you to understand that? If it's basic, why didn't you know before we come? <laughs> so the main thing is, is that you pick up a scope. And if you don't know why it's not blowing, it, then you've got a couple of things to check. One, are the black seals, are they cracked? Two, is this got a good seal here? Is this connected here? Is this home? Understanding your equipment enables you to actually be prepared for what you're doing. Right? So if you understand it, you know what's happening. If the bowel, this is working, and the bowel doesn't stay inflated, what do you think could be wrong? Air. Air's working. Air is coming out. Yeah. 
lot of people forget this isn't home right, etc. The suction tube could be off. That allows the air to freely escape. So a lot of, can you hear the noise slightly different? So listening to your scope, so you listen to your scope, you look at your scope. I listen to it, I hear noises. If I don't hear noises that I'm used to, I know there's something not right. So then, before I pick it up, I check what's going on. What's the next thing you can do? You can check the wheels. So what, are, what do the wheels do? Okay. So how does the up and down work? So if we see the big wheel here, so that's pointing upwards. And what does it do with the image on the screen? So I pull this back, which way does it actually point the tip? Up. So it goes to 12 o'clock. As I pull the, this back, that tip is going up to 12 o'clock. Pull the big wheel back, the image is still going to 12 o'clock. Okay. I've got it the right way, and it's still going to 12 o'clock. So why is it doing this? On the screen, not the tip. Ignore the tip. So watch the screen. So if you watch the screen, it's going up. I rotate the scope. It's going up. Why? The movement of the scope is changed, but what I'm saying to you is, is that the processor will always optimize where the tip is going, and it will always turn it to 12 o'clock. Regardless if I've got the scope looking to the left, it will always go to 12 o'clock. Regardless if I've got the scope looking to the right, the scope will always go to 12 o'clock. Regardless if I've got it pointing there, and naturally it will always go to 12 o'clock. Why do we need to know that? Nothing to do with lesions. Orientation within the lumen. But what the important thing to do is, is what why is it that we want to know what the big or the larger wheel, the up-down wheel, is doing? Why is it that we need to have the orientation and understand what the big wheel is capable of doing? Why is it that we always want to be able to understand this? So the angulation. So what, what is the difference between the angulation if I do tip up to if I do tip down? So how much can I angulate the tip if I do tip up? 160. And what about tip down? So 160, 140. No idea. 90. 90 up? And what about tip down? So if I pull the big, the big wheel back, how much will this angle angulate the tip? So do you see what we're doing? What I'm trying to do is get you to actually turn around. You've asked me already, I didn't understand. So me putting you under pressure is to get to see how much you will try to drag out an answer rather than just say, look, let's get straight to the point. I don't know, I'm unsure. If the scope is perfect, this should be 187 degrees, 187, that's that. If the scope is perfect, this should be 97 degrees. When we retroflect, when we make it look back on ourselves, how can we increase this? 
How can we make that look more acute? That is the tip up all the way. How can I? No, I say or I put for retroversion. Yeah. That's very important. This, these concepts are important. How? What you will you do to make it look even more towards its you own? Push. Huh? Push. 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 Oh, right. Now, there are certain terms that I don't like. Push is one. I'm going to push this what? tube up your bottom. I'm going to advance this tube up your What's bottom. What's the difference between push and advance? Right? No, push is when you have some resistance and you're trying to overcome that. Advance is when you're going and advancing. You know you, where you have to go, so you're just going. But push is basically a term that should not be used in endoscopy. We discourage that because if you don't push, you don't perforate. Here's the scope. Here's the smaller wheel. Right, so now what happens is, is when on a newer scope, can you see now when the little wheel is actually occupying, see the space? So, see the hand. Put your hand just gently around the scope. You just put your hand gently. Feel the gap? Yeah. Now, let go. Now put your hand around the scope. How big? So in Drawing back the little wheel and then drawing back the larger wheel reduces the amount of that it occupies. It increases the angulation, but it reduces how much space it takes up in the rectum. The other thing is, is when you pull the small wheel back, can you see how it just slightly kicks off to one side? So now when you rotate, you're leading with this edge, so you go clockwise torque, you're leading with this edge, rather than this edge. So when the both wheels are drawn back, it is always a clockwise torque to lead with this. Okay. So what's the importance? The importance is knowing what the scope can do. The little wheel will be used very, very little. What are these? Who uses them? Why? Are you guessing or are you telling? I haven't done it. I'm <laughs> to fix at a position, the way she does want to know that the full wheel is not the Okay. So that's a, you're making a statement. It's not what, so you don't really know why we've got these. Do you know why we've got these? Yeah. Well, what's the purpose of it? Okay. What happens is, is that a lot of people use these, and they say in the early generation of scopes, they would say that will lock the wheel in a position that enables us to do something. I never use them. Okay. I want that scope. The big. I've drawn the wheel back. This is what I'm going to look at. So I look at it with the wheels. See it? That area. So I look at it with the wheels. So I move the wheels. Then I lock the wheels in position. I hope it stays in position. All that's done is lock the tip. But what changes the tip is when I do this, do this, do this, do this. So there's no point. What it does, it makes the tip of the scope rigid. In making the tip of the scope rigid, you end up making it very firm to pass. When you're passing your scope, if you feel a little bit of rigidity, that's the wrong thing to do. Then you need to actually be aware of what you need to do opposite. So the golden rule when you're advancing or withdrawing a scope is on withdrawal, you feel in the path of re least resistance. So if that's resisting, it's this way you need to come when you withdraw it. If that's resisting, it's this way you need to come. 
So if it's really, really getting a little bit firm to advance, you withdraw with the opposite torque, but slowly. So what I'm going to do now, I will talk about how we actually reduce loops shortly, but what we're going to talk about is looking at the tip. I'm just going to take the image off so we're looking at the tip. The reason why I've put this on is so that you can see what the tip is doing. Right, so clockwise torque. How can I apply 360 degrees, make that scope go back to that position? What must I do? You hold the scope like this. How can I make that scope go 360 degrees? 